A lot of people are asking me, how do I engage my employees? What do I do? There's so many things. I'm hearing all these conflicting ideas. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to engage your employees. Hi, my name is Jody, and welcome to another video. If you're new, to this, please subscribe and be sure you ring the bell so you don't miss a thing. Let's start off with where employee engagement starts. Now, many people are going, it's over there with them. They need to be engaged. It's not something you can put on their job description. Engagement actually starts with you and me as business leaders. Many business leaders and managers are lacking in the skills that are required to engage and to manage and to lead their teams. They're lacking in communication skills, problem solving skills, decision making skills, team building skills. They're missing in many of the skill sets that are required in order to be able to be effective in leading and managing people. Employee engagement isn't a secret. It's human interaction, and it's not easy. Most of the time, we'd rather get on with it than to have to slow down long enough to learn, to think, and to interact with our teams in effective ways. However, there's a strong business case for why it matters. You have to believe in it, and you have to be willing as a leader to let your ego style of command and control go in order to be able to connect on an emotional plane with your employees. Now when I say that, I can hear in the background, oh God, this soft stuff, mushy, I'm not interested, all I want is the results. Well guess what? In today's day and age, the only way you can get results is by being willing to get, engage with them. Because in the industrial age, when we treated people more like parts of a machine, you might have been able to be more forceful, command and control. But today, knowledge workers may have more knowledge about an area of, say, accounting or marketing than you do, and your success rides on their willingness to engage on your behalf. So how do we do this? Engagement is about ownership. So let me take you through an exercise. I'm gonna give you a couple of, of math uh, problems, and then I want you to tell me what's the first thing you notice, okay? Four plus five equals nine. 12 minus five equals six. 13 plus two equals 15. So what's the first thing you noticed? That's right. 12 minus 5 doesn't equal 6, Jody. It's 7. And that's typically what we do as managers. The first thing we do is we notice what's wrong. Rather than two of those problems were actually right. And then we go to the employee and we focus on what they didn't do right rather than what they do do right. And then we wonder why they avoid us, why they don't want to interact why the moment they see us coming, they put their heads down. Because the environment isn't safe. So one of the first things there is to do is to just start looking for catching people doing things right. That's number one. Another thing you can do is you can ask, what do my people need from me in order to be able to do their best work? Another question is, what's it like being led by me? I can tell you, years ago, I wouldn't want to have been led by me, <laughs> that's for sure. I've learned a lot in the last 14 years of having this business, but I can tell you in the beginning when I was scared and I was new, I probably wasn't very easy to work for. You could go and you could ask each of the individual people on your team, what's important to you? What's interesting to you? Where do you want to make a contribution? And listen for their answers so that you know, maybe this person is looking for 
expanding their capacities or gaining mastery in an area in the business or maybe they're interested in working in another area of the business but just listening is going to point you in the direction of ways that you can improve their experience of being on your team. I'm going to share with you a couple of things that you can do, places to look. It would be almost like keys. First of all, set clear goals and expectations. People always want to know where they stand and what's expected of them. If they don't have a job description with key performance indicators of how you're going to measure them in terms of their performance, that's a really good starting place. Secondly, train them. Only 5% of employees that were surveyed said that they've had any training in the last five years. 5%! Communicate with them. How many team meetings do you actually run? Is it once a month, once a week, every day huddles? Is it a year ago? Team meetings really matter. People want to be abreast of what's going on in your organization. Coaching your team. This one actually demonstrates 100% return on your investment in coaching your team. Taking either your time or having an outside coach helping them to improve their productivity and performance. The next one is leadership flexibility. Being who's needed for that employee. Everybody's behavioral style, everybody's motivator, and everybody's strengths and attributes are different. So rookie leadership is, this is who I am, take it or leave it. Whereas mature leadership is, who's needed for this individual? and this individual, and this individual, and being able to modify our style to be a match for that person so that we can have the best rapport and the most effective uh, way of interacting with them. Be careful in the way that you recognize employees because a lot of times we reward our top performers and what that does is it actually creates an environment where other people on a team feel like losers. So really look at your recognition and rewards programs and make sure that they're aligned with creating an environment where everyone is honored and valued. Retention starts in the hiring process. The experience that people have when they come to interview for you, the way the job ad is written, when they walk into the office, how prepared are you for onboarding somebody? What's their first six weeks like in your business? So all the way from recruitment through onboarding and into the ongoing training and development. But engagement starts way beyond where you might think it starts. It starts all the way back at, oh, who's going to be a good fit for our company? And then lastly, here is honesty. Trust is the number one foundational aspect of engagement. The team doesn't care if you make a mistake. They care how you handle something. So if you do make a mistake and you can honestly say, hey, you know what, I behave badly here. It's not what I'm committed to. Please forgive me. And then you put in a practice to make sure it doesn't happen again. They can respect that. They've got a lot of room for that. But when we pretend like we're infallible, we erode trust. So actually being willing to be honest and authentic goes a really long way on the emotional plane, which is what engagement is all about. Employees who carry their weight and act responsibly lose respect for leaders that don't hold everyone to the same standards. And when they lose respect, and when they lose their will to add that discretionary effort to do a job at the next level, then your zombie behavior starts to creep in and people just go through the motions. Sometimes we justify as leaders why we let this one off the hook and not the others, but that, that actually erodes the confidence and the will of our high performers. So if you want to have a highly engaged team, it's important to recognize that the environment that pulls everybody up to high performing has to be managed by you, you the leader. We need people who are ready to lead when we're ready to stop leading. So the development of your team 
is in your own best interest, aside from the business case, aside from the profitability growth, aside from outperforming your competition, actually engaged people who are pulling learning toward them, who are pulling growth toward them, give you the freedom in your business to either focus on something else that you want to do or going to the next level of expansion or diversification. But unless they're engaged, they're not going to be there doing that kind of work that will free you up when you're ready to move back. A few moments ago, I was mentioning about the math problems and first thing that we noticed is the one that was wrong. Well, Sean Anker's got a great TED talk on happiness in the workplace. And his research showed that when we create an environment where people feel safe and they're happy, that all the metrics in business actually increase. And rather than going into the 19% here and 21% there and 13% here, knowing that when you create an environment where people feel safe and they feel happy, it actually releases the endorphins in the brain that create greater levels of awareness and focus and energy to do better work, more productive work, more creative work. And so rather than going around and looking for what people are doing wrong and pointing out what they've done uh, that they could do better, actually going around and saying, hey, that's awesome. Could you show me how you did that? Or could you show so-and-so how to do this? And engaging them on what they're doing right will go a long way towards creating an environment where people feel engaged and want to contribute more. Because I work with a lot of businesses, I know that from the old days, and there's still remnants of it in many of us, myself included, where we find what's wrong. If all you do is stop that behavior and start catching people doing things right, you're gonna go a really, really long way on creating sustainable engagement with your team. And that doesn't cost you anything. A couple of years ago, I got certified in an engagement program called Engage and Grow. And the reason I chose to get certified in this particular program is that unlike many of the other engagement programs that are out there where we're laying a program on a team, this particular program has a framework. It's a framework, but inside of it, while it's guided, the actual content is created by the members that are in that group. And that leads to buy-in, it leads to a public accountability. Nobody ever wants to be the one who didn't do what they said they were going to do. It also creates a, a relatedness and there's aspect of it that includes feedback. Believe it or not, as much as people say, oh my God, feedback from my peers, I don't want that. That routinely around the world is the aspect that people say they loved the most. And it's the one that when the program is complete, they're committed to continuing to do on their own. Other tools for engagement include Gallup's survey. Gallup has the 12 questions. You've probably heard of these in the past. Um, I'll go through and read them to you in a moment. But the Gallup organization does a lot of work as it relates to engagement. And they do it mainly through the Strength Finder assessment. And so the Strength Finders um, is a, an assessment tool where they will give you your top five uh, natural attributes that still have to be developed into a strength but that you're born with. It's like your natural wiring. And they couple that with what are the things that they found have people follow a leader and creates teams that have high, high levels of, of engagement. The Gallup organization was studying high-performing people and high-performing teams and they were looking for what's common they figured if they could isolate what was common, then everyone would have access to high performance. Well, in their studies, what they found was there was no single attribute that everyone shared in common, like say discipline. What they did find was that people who were reliably able to deliver results 
were working to a natural talent that they had developed into a strength. And then the assessments, they give you those, your top five. I mean, you can get all 34, but really the top five are most important. You still have to develop a natural attribute into a strength. However, that's where it's easy because you have a natural attribute. You still have to learn, but it's easy to learn. It's easy to develop. While they were doing that work, they were also looking at what do our corporations and our school systems and organizations focus on. And I don't know about you, but certainly for me and many people I speak to, they say, well, you're really good at this, but boy, you better work on this thing you're not so good at. Again, going back to what we're not so good at. And that research showed that no matter how much time, attention, energy, and money you throw at a non-talent, it will only ever improve between 10 and 15%. So what we do is we create mediocre, miserable people trying to get better, working really hard to get better at something they're never gonna get much better at. Now this is important because engaged people are people who are working to something they enjoy doing, a place where they can experience mastery, a place where they have autonomy, so that they're in an environment that allows them to be a contribution. People want to actually contribute. They want there to be purpose to what they're doing rather than, like, rather than pushing a boulder up a hill do you get to the top and it rolls back down again? When people feel like they're moving forward, they're engaged. And a way that you can have people on your team be engaged is to know their strengths and to help them to work in an environment where they can develop those strengths. So I've shared a lot of different things that you can do. Um, anywhere from looking at what are people doing right, to investing in strength finders, to looking at engagement programs like Engage and Grow, um, one I know and love, but there are others. Perhaps one thing that you might consider doing is choosing someone who's going to be the engagement champion. Somebody who has the listening of other people on the team and who would be willing to be the person who keeps that conversation for engagement alive in your organization. And then talk with your team. See what it is that's working and not working. I've shared with you some simple things that you can do, some inexpensive or free things that you can do to begin engaging your team. And you can go on up the, up the ladder to all manner of levels. Of the teams that I've worked with, that have invested in their teams are getting astounding results because their team feels valued. You know, so if all you do is make sure that they experience being valued, you're gonna go a long way on getting engagement in your company. Great companies improve engagement by focusing on the culture. 90% of the people in a great company say they believe in the purpose of that company 67% say it's safe for me to speak up, it's safe for me to challenge the status quo in my company. And they believe in real change because they've seen steps being taken that are producing results. It's not a quick fix. It's got to become part of your business strategy, investing in the growth of your people. And that will give you the kind of engagement that will let your company soar. We've gone through lots of ideas here. Take the ones that are simple for you to start with and then build on that. You know, start with finding what people are doing right. Find somebody who can be the champion. Do the team meetings. Start investing at higher and higher levels. And as you do, you're gonna see astounding results in your company. So thank you for watching this video. And before you leave, please subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Till next time.